Minecraft's creaking update. The one that was revealed at Minecraft Live only a mere few weeks ago, it's a pretty fire update. But that's not to say that there aren't things that could be better. Thankfully, since day one, Mojang has been all about community feedback, and taking into account their relatively recent announcement of drops and feedback having more of a play than ever before, and well, that's now's our time to shine. From the creaking to the brand new biome to everything that fills it out, today let's talk the problems with Minecraft's newest update. But first, two little disclaimers. I'm an optimist, a warm, loving one at that. I like Minecraft's newest update, and overall, if I had to give it a rating out of 10, I mean, my rating would be a positive rating, as it stands right now, even with all of these quote-unquote problems in the game. Disclaimer Numato 2, these features. Judging by even the look of them from the main menu, they are highly experimental. Depending on when this video hits your algo or if you're a notification gang, keep in mind that depending on when you end up watching this video, some of the stuff might already have been implemented, fixed, or changed in some other way. Anyway, with that out of the way, the feedback. Let's get to it. Today, there's only one spot that I wanted to begin, and that's with one of the largest things that I see a problem with this update the tree from the looks of the initial snapshot change log of the snapshot where all of these features were initially debuted well we'll learn pretty quickly that the pale garden is a variation of the dark forest biome biome variants aside though do we really think that the tree still even being a tree variant to need to be exactly the same shape let me ask you a follow-up question you're young maybe say six and a half maybe six and three quarters years old you find this biome you're pretty excited to find it until you realize that hey wait a second even the youngest of eyes will notice that the dark oak tree when placed next to a pale oak tree it's essentially the same thing do we think seriously from the perspective of one who which is in the dark as to the true nature of this biome being simply a biome variant of the dark oak forest and not its true cold own thing couple years down the line do we think seriously the mainstream public will realize that the pale garden is meant to be a biome variant of a pre-existing biome and to not just yet another example of that tired argument that you're looking at on screen with the lore behind this biome, some of the more small yet interesting quirks of this place, and even the inspiration that they took when creating this thing, they were kind of cooking. However, in its implementation, the tree, just being a simple clone of the original one, well, it's a bit of a huge, gigantic missed opportunity. An argument that we talked about in this video right here, when Mojang debuted this brand new tree, they said they took some inspiration from trees, kind of like willow trees. If you want to talk about a willow tree, we're absolutely not talking about a tree that looks something like this right here. That's a whole lot of filling in the blank that I would need to do in my mind. And again, a biome variant, you could say the mangrove swamp is a biome variant of the swamp, right? Uh, but they didn't reuse the same old tree. One of my favorite ideas for a tree is take something that's going on with the acacia tree right here, maybe not that one or you know what yes maybe that one maybe even something like this where we have branches that go up and kind of curve off to the side imagine starting with this two by two sapling concept which i do actually think is quite fire but then as these trees grow up you ensure that near the top of the trees we get a little bit more branchy more specifically branchy going outwards so i don't think it really worked right here but you know imagine a two by two tree with branches kind of like this always consistently leaning outwards Ah, yes, I now realize that I kind of forgot to say, not only are we going to be complaining today, but, you yeah, know, I'm your local optimist. We'll be proposing solutions as well. If you've got one, drop it down below and tap that like button. Biome size. Ooh, this is a good one. So this seed that was sent to me by Luca on stream, it's a beautiful seed. And even though it hasn't even fully finished loading in off in the distance, you could tell already that this pale garden biome, it's in the outliers here. This biome is absolutely insane when it comes to the size. However, a biome looking like that isn't usually the case. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and create a completely random world here. No seed. Don't know what I'm looking at. I'll go back to the menu because I realized I forgot to make it experimental. The biome doesn't exist. And then, oh, look at this. You can't make it up potentially kind of perfect so if we go ahead and do a tiny bit of research real quick here and locate the closest pale garden biome not really all that close after all anyways though locating the pale garden biome zooming out and we can see pretty quickly that the pale garden biome is kind of closer to its more typical size one of the large issues that i've been noticing with the pale garden biome and a lot of you guys have been noticing as well is the sizing of the pale garden biome maybe this is due to like the biome generation where it specifically generates whatever maybe it's down to being a biome variant i don't know but the pale garden biome often it is laughably tiny now with this one you got to keep in mind that not every single pale oak tree comes with a creaking heart inside of it that means theoretically you find yourself a small biome like this uh, but then because this biome is so small and because there's not always a creaking heart i'm not even guaranteed for sure to have the coolest experience out of all of them inside of this update with the creaker 
I don't even need to linger on it for too long. I think it's undeniable, though. The Pale Garden Biome in its current small form, it's pretty lame. It would be way more cool to have this biome generating a whole lot larger. Now, for today's video, I wanted to take into account not only my opinions, but also large opinions that I've been seeing in the community bouncing around. Another problem that I'm seeing people talk about with the Pale Garden Biome, and that I do agree with, is the placement specifically in the world. Often, the Pale Garden Biome is found climbing up a mountain. The experience that this new creaking boy offers us is really, really cool. Super unique experience, but I do think that this experience plays a little bit better in a land that is a little bit more flat. Like, the idea of being able to turn around and run away from this thing in a flat, open forest, uh, I find it's way more cool and kind of more enjoyable, too. I definitely do agree. I think this biome should maybe generate a little bit less frequently climbing a mountain and a little bit more oftenly in large areas that tend to be a little bit more flat. Keep in mind that, of course, though, because of how modern Minecraft biome generation works, you would totally be able to find this thing in a mountain still, too. Incentives. Ooh, now, this is a tricky one. Kind of divisive, too. On the matter of incentives, this tweet right here that I put out the day of a Minecraft live, like, pretty much right after it happened. This kind of encapsulates my large take and opinion when it comes to incentives in Minecraft for everything. Though I don't necessarily believe there needs to be some kind of true prize or something that you need to come to this biome to get, I do also kind of feel at the same time it is kind of already there, and there could totally be more added to the biome to incentivize it more. And with that, I want to segue into the next thing here, and that is the ambiance and the experience inside of a biome that is known as the Pale Garden Biome. However, when it comes to a garden here, we really only have one single single type of plant and a little bit of moss to go alongside it so maybe two look i don't know about you but everyone's interpretations of words from time to time gets to be a little bit different initially when i heard that leak for minecraft live a biome called the pale garden biome my mind went to whoa there's like seven new types of flowers there's a bunch of flowering particles like the lush caves but like cranked up to volume 10 and even more, it's all about the lush plant life inside of this place. Jump ahead to where we are now and look again, I don't know if this is just a lazy excuse to say, hey, it's a biome variant and it doesn't exist inside of the dark oak forest biome, so it just needs to be the same in the pale garden biome. Or on the other hand, maybe we need to cut the devs a break and this is a very early version of the biome. It's going to be a garden biome by the time it releases. Right now, it's a little bit more of a forest, but either way, for sure, more ambiance and things need to be put into this biome to make it feel good. Of which I can think of like, I mean, well, a million, but let's talk about like three. A large one and one of my favorite ones. We were talking all about it on stream. We were talking all about it just now. The want, the desire, the need for more plant life inside of a biome that is called a garden. A brand new flower, except maybe inside of this biome to tie into the whole unique experience and atmosphere. What if this new flower, kind of like the wither rose, granted an effect? Unlike the wither rose, instead of granting the wither effect, how about a blindness effect that would make the creaking even more dangerous? If you're not careful where you're walking, from time to time you bump into a flower, it grants you blindness, and then, because you're blind, well, only if you came to this place in the dead of night right now, we'll talk about that later. Well then, because you're blind for, say, like 10 seconds and your POV looks something like this, the creaking can smell it on you and moves upon you real quickly. Another thing I think Mojang needs to do when it comes to the ambiance inside of this biome is play with the biome fog and maybe the idea of fogs being different from biome to biome. So right now, when I move into this biome from something else, it's really cool. The sky goes from like bright, happy, and blue to grayed out and scary. Imagine if your FOV kind of did something similar here too, wherein as soon as you bump yourself over into this garden biome, that's not really a garden. Your view goes from like real super far to super close. As soon as you cross into this biome to increase the ambiance and atmosphere, a dense fog sits in that could maybe be cleared by a brand new type of torch. So this one right here could also solve a couple of other problems as well. Now let's say I was simulating heavy fog with a low render distance. I'm moving around inside of this biome. Well, because there is so much fog and I can't see very far, well, then it's not going to necessarily matter as much how specifically large this biome is. If the fog was a little bit more dense and we made sure the creaking would always pop up inside of this biome, I mean, just look at how creepy this place is. Moving around, there's just like, I mean, moving around here with this grayed out fog too, it just makes it so, so scary. I would argue the fog could even be more intense too. But you're something of a builder and you want to build here without fog? Well, no big deal. Some kind of brand new light source block. A light source that would even be able to be hidden away somewhere, like under the ground, that would repel the fog and set it off a little bit farther from you. Ambiance, thing number three. We've got that heavy fog set in. We've got a brand new flower type that maybe gives you blindness. A couple other plants inside of this thing to make it a garden. Maybe new ones or paled out ones. And to maybe even the occasional sapling dotting the floor as well. The final thing I believe this place really needs to really up that atmosphere is some kind of particle drop. 
dropper. Whether that's in the form of another new flower that's on the ground or something like the spore blossom that's hanging up in the trees or heck, even the leaves themselves like it's done inside of the cherry blossom biome. We need more particles inside of this place. Really popular one that I keep seeing people say is now is the time to bring fireflies back. After all, there's no frogs inside of this biome. Why not make some fireflies pop up inside of this place from time to time in the dead of night? And then look at this thing. The eyes are there. The firefly inside of this biome would almost be like a fake out. Oh, no, there's a creaking in the background. Oh, wait, no, never mind. It's just a firefly. Next up, let's move on to something that I've got to be honest is truly driving me crazy right now. So from the biome to a component of the biome, we've got moss. That's been in the game for a minute now. Now we have this brand new one. It's called pale moss. It's meant to be pretty similar to moss, except to grayed out. You're going to find it all over this biome. Of course, because it's moss, just like our classic one at this point, we get a carpet too. But wait, there's more. Because it's also moss, we get a brand new hanging moss variant as well. It's such a small thing, but come on, Mojang, let's be consistent here. We need a green hanging hanging moss i need it i'll talk about it until the day i'm not here any longer we need a hanging very into the green moss for decorating it would be fire i mean if we're all about drops and making these things really packed out and people hyped about them look it it's just a brand new green hanging plant literally do what this argument says and just reskin it and throw it in the game come on for even more of a moss argument, check this video after this one because I think a lot more could be done with the moss. In fact, I didn't even mention this one in that one, but absolutely, we're going to need to see a little bit of green binding going on with the moss carpet too because that is so cool. But anyways, I'd like to move on. Next up, this biome. If I head over to this biome in the dead of daytime right now, I mean... So I'm not going to lie, it's a creepy ambiance. It's really dead quiet, no mobs inside of this thing, but... I mean, the whole cool experience is just not going to be here. Take into account that I and so many more of you who are watching this video right now. In fact, I should probably run a poll on this at some point. That'd be interesting to see. But a large majority of players for a various set of reasons quite literally never experience nighttime in Minecraft. And that's kind of the problem right there. Because if I never experience ni <laughs> nighttime in Minecraft, I'm never going to get to see this really cool, unique experience. Also, with some of the other mobs inside of this biome, it's even more of an incentive for me to just go ahead and skip the nighttime. I don't want creepers to blow up this entire place and ruin me and just in general everything that i've grinded so hard to come knowing love so thing number one that i would change maybe consider changing the hostile mobs that will spawn inside of this biome i like the idea of a bunch of things and sure yeah it's definitely cool but maybe instead uh, we should have the creaking really be the king here and maybe maybe something else like one other type of mob maybe a zombie or something uh, an up close mob i guess uh, sure you want to make it really pale make it only so skeletons will spawn here in creaking but either way we need to adjust the hostile mobs to spawn here because i think creepers spawning inside of this biome on top of everything else i mean it's a little bit excessive Imagine how eerie this place would be if, say, only creaking skeletons and maybe endermen would be able to spawn inside of this biome. Now, on the note of these things, only being able to be experienced at nighttime, that's kind of a whole nother story. Whether that should be the case or not, I don't know. I think it's kind of up to you, but at least in my opinion, I don't think it should be. If we take a look at this biome as a whole and the dense canopy that is created by the large amount of these trees and their current shape, well, even in the daytime, we'll find with these trees being so dense that the light here is low enough for things like a zombie that would typically burn up in the sunshine to be able to persist and live. I would argue that the creaking should be able to exist in the daytime as well. Maybe not full bright sunlight daytime, but like, say, anything with a light level of 10 or lower, the creaking can exist. With that kind of mechanic, that would mean that you'd be able to find this biome in the daytime, and there would still be a little bit of risk involved with this place. I mean, now you would never know. You'd have to always be on your toes, because at literally any point in the day-night cycle, you would have the chance to be able to run into one of these things. Increase the fog here, too, and even in the dead of daytime, that's the perfect setup for the best horror experience in Minecraft. Next up, I want to talk about the creaking and specifically what the creaking likes to drop on the floor, aka right now, nothing. Is that a problem? I don't know. If I had to make a definitive ranking of all the problems and not so much inside of this video, this would be near the bottom of the list. But I'm not going to lie. The idea of this creaking really cool mob being able to drop something, maybe even, say, the occasional log or two on the ground, it's intriguing. If this buddy were to say, have the ability to occasionally drop a single pale log on the ground. You know, in my example, I'm thinking something kind of like how the Enderman has the chance to drop an Ender Pearl, but it definitely doesn't always. Well, this could provide more technical players with a unique opportunity and a new way to come up with some kind of fancy wood farm. It would be a wood farm that would only be able to produce pale logs. And remember that the player themselves, they cannot remove the creaking. So that means no looting comes into play or anything like that. That would mean instead, players would need to place this creaking hard down 
down, line it up with other logs, break the creaking heart to get the thing to go away, and then repeat the whole process again. The more determined, strong-willed players might be able to come up with a farm that is like decently efficient, but for the most part, the mainstream, they wouldn't really probably bother with it too much. And I mean, also, having this guy drop a log on the ground when you remove it, say you take the creaking heart out, then you turn around and you find a log mysteriously sitting on the ground, oh, that kind of increases the whole like scare and creepiness of it all, right? And it also makes you realize, oh no, like look at how close that guy got to me. He almost got me, I should be more careful right now this creaking update as it is it's pretty cool but there's quite a bit that i think should be changed about it to make it even better what would you change about the creaking update you call it down below and tap that like button subscribe for more while you're down there i'm super excited about all of these new faster updates that mojang is going to do and i would love to be the one to help inform you and show you about all these new updates check them out and discover them together so anyways the final thing that i'd like to talk about is a big one that i saw coming from players who care a little bit more about beautification the creaking heart log right here is really really cool looking Looking. It's also really cool looking on the top of the log right there, but unfortunately how it stands right now, if you want this cool glowing version of it, well, you always need to incorporate pale oak logs above and below it, or if you're rotating this block side to side, then it's side to side of it. That's kind of unfortunate because it's such a cool texture. Perhaps when placed in between two logs like this, it will generate a creaking. And maybe, alternatively, if placed down on the ground and then maybe, say, powered, kind of like a copper ball, then you could remove the power. Well, it would light up, but it wouldn't be able to spawn a creaking. This would be the perfect way, in my opinion, to preserve the balance of, you know, the devs wanting us to spawn the creaking with a tree, but also us, the builders, being able to get that beautiful looking glow. So, what would you change about the Pale Garden? My patrons, a huge shout out, Grand Crazy May, Medical Boomstick, Fire Dragon 19, Steve M, and Nick C. Thank you. Until next time, it's been me, Waddles. I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.